lighting is changing like cray cray. Hey everyone, it's Susan Jones and welcome back to my Sunday Spotlight. A couple weeks ago I made this subtraction video and I went ahead and asked you guys to drop some ideas in the comments for skills you're going to be teaching soon so that way I can make my videos relevant to you guys and many of you said you're going to be teaching place value in the next couple weeks so I wanted to go ahead and make this video a little roundup of some of my favorite place value activities and I even have a little freebie for you at the end. And then in last week's video, I actually went ahead and showed you how our kitchen is coming along. We have been making a few changes to our kitchen. We painted our kitchen island, and I wanna show you a couple of the other things that we are up to. So while I do all that, make sure you like my video and go ahead and subscribe to my channel, and we will dive right in. value there are a few of my favorite activities that I'm going to share with you today now if you've been following my channel for a while you may have seen a couple of these but as my channel grows and gets bigger and I have more and more videos I want to make sure that I reference back to a couple of them just in case any of my new viewers and subscribers may have missed them so don't worry you're still gonna get a couple new things here but First, I wanna start off with some of my absolute favorites and I shared those in this video right here. So I'm gonna quickly go over what the activities are like and I'll insert a couple videos so you can see kind of how they work. But if you want the full breakdown of them, you'll just go to these videos after this one. So, and I'll make sure to link them in the description. The first activity I want to talk about is called Scoop and Group, and it is an easy one to get students kind of really feeling those manipulatives. So essentially what they do is they will get a bucket or a bin or a bag, some container filled with small items. So it can be beads, it can be buttons, it could be little Cheerios, anything that's kind of small and you have about 50 of them, let's say. And all students will do is they can either use their hands, they can use a little shovel, you can make it as interactive and fun as you'd like for them, and they will take one big scoop of something and dump it out in front of them. Then using a little paper like this, they will go ahead and group their items into groups of 10 and leftovers. Now, if we're in the classroom, I like to have students do this a few times and they can compare the numbers that they got each time. They can see which one was higher, which one was lower. They can also go ahead and compare with other students in the classroom. Now, also in that video, I went ahead and shared my place value boot camp activity that I loved to do when kicking off place value. So with this one, I just teach a little chant and then they have a little place value boot camp activity hunt that they have to do around the classroom or you could even spread it out outside. If your students are at home, you can have them maybe spread it out in their house if you have any parent involvement, but it is a fun one that I would be remiss if I did not share with you guys. Now, another video with a fun place value activity that I shared a long, long time ago is place value arrow paths, and I love this game. It is one that I have used for a very long time in the classroom, but it doesn't involve manipulatives. So it's not one like scoop and group where they're really putting their hands on it. It's not one like place value boot camp where they're seeing that the tens are tall and the ones are small and they're counting up tens and ones. Instead, this place value game is really getting students used to how a 100 or a 120 chart works and getting them to understand what it's like to add and subtract tens. Even Not necessarily with them using addition and subtraction, but just getting them to understand that when they go up on a place value chart, that the number gets less, it gets lower, and as they go down on a place value chart in the same you know thing, they're really just adding a 10. So it's just another way to kind of reinforce place value within a 120 chart. So those are some of my favorites that I've already shared here on YouTube. Again, I'm gonna link those videos down in the description, but now for a couple new things. Before I tell you two different activities that I have for you, 
I want to just kind of send out a little cautionary tip that if you are teaching place value from home or digitally remotely and you're not in a classroom, your students might not have access to either, you know, base 10 blocks where they have the cubes and the rods, or they might not have access to uh, connecting cubes. And so I just would caution you to be careful about using things like uh, pretzel sticks as a 10 and Cheerios as a one, simply because there's no relation between the two. And of course, when you are teaching place value to your young students, you're really showing them that with those base 10 blocks, that 10 individual ones, you know, equal a 10, they equal a rod, they're exactly the same. Same with the connecting cubes, you connect them together to make a 10 and you can clearly see and so can the students that 10 of these cubes, even though we can count it by 10s, is the same as the 10 um, individual cubes. Now, I only say that for, you know, the beginning, if you're just teaching it, if you're a first grade teacher and you've already gone over place value or a second grade teacher and you feel as though your students already understand that concept, then sure, go ahead and use things like pretzel rods or anything long as tens and anything little as ones. But just for that beginning, like I said, it's just a cautionary tip, just, I guess, something to think about is just the relationship between those. So as a as another option, I would instead stick with Cheerios or stick with, you know, really small things, pieces of rice, seeds, whatever they have in their house. And instead of using a pretzel stick as a 10, they could just group them. So they can just keep them in groups. So they still fully understand that 10 of them equals 10 and they don't need to count up every single one. They can still skip count by tens, things like that. Let me know if that makes sense down in the comments. Okay, speaking of teaching remotely, let me go ahead and show you this quick, fun, and interactive place value game that I have for the computer. Hey guys, so here is the place value digital board game. Um, you can get this in PowerPoint and Google Slides. So that's how it comes. It comes in PowerPoint and Google Slides. And all you will do, here's the Google Slides version, is when you download it, it has like 130 or something slides. You don't have to touch any of them. They're already ready for you to go and you just press present. Students will need one die, so they can use a real one, or if you are you know, doing this over a Google Meet or a Zoom meeting or something, you can also open up a second slide or a second screen that has a digital dice. So up to you, I like having them you know, physically hold one so they can actually roll it and it feels like a game board. So I rolled a one. What students will do is, and I have video instructions in the unit, so don't worry, but basically students can take turns and if I rolled a one, they will go ahead and click one space and they'll have to see if they can solve the problem. Piper went on a treasure hunt and collected 16 coins. How many groups of tens and ones can she make? I think one ten and six ones. Now they can't click anything on the screen. It will not advance the slides. The only things they can click are back to game board if they accidentally clicked on the wrong problem or they click here to check their answer. So there we go, one, 10 and six ones left over. My answer is correct, so I can go ahead and press below. I press the answer and you can see my little game piece, it actually moved. So there's a bunch of different problems and students can either take turns going back and forth. But again, it's fun if you're on a Zoom meeting because you can actually chat with them and hear their reasoning behind some of these answers. So we have some solve it problems. What's shown below, I think 62, correct. They keep going, story problems. Yikes, mom counted 67 ants in our picnic basket. How many groups of tens and ones could she make? So I, and then for the answer, I like to have it actually visually here so they can actually see it. If you want them to, again, you kind of have total reign here, you can have them have a pencil and paper and show you their work or just talk it out, whatever they are thinking, which does not belong. Seven ten seven ones, 80 plus seven or 77. B, and then when they get to the finish line, it says, woohoo, you've won the game. And the fun thing about it is you can play this game over and over and over. Now, all the problems will be the same, but if you're playing with a regular die and it only has six spaces, it's unlikely that you're going to and like land on the same exact ones over and over. There's a bunch of different problems that students could land on. 
Okay, for a little quick recap, I shared so far Scoop and Group, which is a fun, hands-on activity for students to really understand tens and ones. I shared Place Value Boot Camp, which I love for getting students up, getting them moving and excited. I shared Arrow Paths, which I love for a 100 or a 120 chart. And then I just shared a digital math game with you, which I never thought I would be making digital board games to be used remotely, but 2020, here we are. And now I wanted to go ahead and share a print and play game with you that I made, which is a total freebie that you can take and use in your classroom. Now, if you've known me for a while, you know that after I teach a skill, I like to practice it, practice it, practice it. And I like to do that with print and play games or some low prep, easy to play and engaging game. So I do have print and play games for place value right here, but this one is actually not included in that pack. It's a different one that I had made for my SJT math club. So math club members, you not only have this for addition and subtraction, but when you log in, you should be able to get this one for free as well under the place value section. So the game board looks like this and let me just quickly show you how to play. Here is the game board for Rat Trap. As you can see, every time you roll the die, it will kind of correlate with a different range of numbers from zero to 120. So here I rolled a four, numbers 61 through 80. I need to look through the grid and find a number that matches. And they're listed in different ways. So you have some place value cubes, expanded form, and you have just listed like tens and ones. And students will keep rolling the die. They will find a number that matches within that range. And they keep going until they are able to trap one of the rats. And the way they tra trap a rat is to put all the cubes around it so that it's surrounded like the rat doesn't have any way to get out. You'll be able to grab that game board down in the description below along with any of the links to other videos, units, anything I really mentioned in this video will be down in the description. So make sure you look down there to grab all your stuff. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please go ahead and give me a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel and be sure to click that bell. The bell is how you get notified of every new week's video. See you next Sunday. Bye.